Hello everyone. Uh, this is a game that I had uh, played in uh, one of the tournaments uh, that I had um, done and um, I was trying to uh, be clever and try to uh, find a checkmate and unfortunately I couldn't do it. So instead of blundering a piece or um, uh, trying to force the issue when perhaps there wasn't a checkmate there at all, I decided to draw. And a draw is just as good as a, a win, as far as I'm concerned, especially when it comes to tournaments. You might not get the full point for the win, but at the same time, you haven't lost either. And, um, you know, essentially, you know, you've, uh, you live to fight another day, so to speak. So, um, I'd like to show you this uh, game I played and uh, how we came to this uh, uh, position. So this is the game that I had played. My opponent was 1781 and I was 1614 at the time. And uh, I played the uh, Sicilian uh, French variation. Begins with e4, e6, knight f3, c5, d4, knight f6, e5, d5, and knight c3. Now from here there are um, uh, three um, uh, three lines that you can um, play and that's uh, knight c6 um, knight c uh, knight takes c3 and uh, uh, c takes uh, d4 uh, unfortunately I opted to play this move which took uh, took us out of the book and uh, my computer thought that was kind of uh, confusing uh, as always um, you're more than welcome to check out the uh, evaluational um, position of my move and then after my move if you're interested in that so my computer had recommended knight takes c3 exchanging the knight and uh, I think this is where one could possibly transpose into um, a French defense advance variation and um, if my opponent takes the knight um, they get double pawns on the C file and uh, it helps to open up I guess the the B file a little bit um, and then as well you know I could opt to uh, push the D4 pawn up and uh, maybe come over and uh, um, try to do um, a center break possibly I'm not quite sure what um, the outcome of that would be but the game had continued and here I got myself into a little bit of trouble I'm trying to defend my rook and then my opponent plays this move and at this point in time I thought uh, that I was in uh, serious trouble uh, just because of uh, my opponent coming down here and then of course I kind of feared the worst with 
possibly the knight coming down in order to help uh, my opponent out. So I had opted to castle kingside, which I thought wasn't too bad, but you know, again, I'm kind of fearing even uh, perhaps uh, the dark score bishop coming down. Or even, you know, maybe perhaps the knight coming down trying to uh, put more pressure here. And uh, this is where I was trying to figure out how I could possibly defend my rook and attack the queen as well. And my idea here was moving the knight to uh, a5, which I thought was a really good way of fighting back. Uh, my computer uh, did suggest perhaps just taking the dark square bishop while well, exchanging dark square bishops. Uh, that being said, it does open up the uh, king side a bit. My opponent would then have doubled pawns on the e file. And uh, castling kingside wouldn't look as uh, nice just because of the uh, pawn shield that's been opened up. So I had opted to play this move. And as you can see, I have, I'm, uh, I have like a triple uh, attack here. The knight's attacking the uh, light square bishop, my pawn's attacking the dark square bishop, and my bishop's attacking the uh, queen. And after this move, um, the, uh, the B2 uh, pawn is being threatened. And one of the things here um, I kind of looked at was the possibility of my opponent uh, moving their uh, light square bishop over to e4, uh, perhaps putting pressure on uh, my h pawn. And uh, I had uh, played this move here, just advancing my pawn, attacking my opponent's queen, and um, you know, if my opponent's light square bishop comes up to take, uh, my opponent unfortunately is outgunned. They need to bring in another attacker in order to uh, support that. But at the same time, I am hanging my pawn on d7 as well. But, uh, you know, uh, my computer did find this kind of an interesting uh, move and uh, felt like white was better if not equal in the position. But um, my computer had suggested e6, taking, as I said before, the uh, possibility of um, 
threatening my h7 pawn, uh, helping me to defend my king a bit better. Uh, my opponent might push the h pawn down, and I think the idea behind it is trying to open up my pawn shield. And my rook might come up in order to defend, help defend the pawn and the king as well. My opponent might uh, play b3, and uh, uh, c4 was suggested. Now my opponent now has an extra attacker, so they'll be able to hold on to this square, but at the same time I thought, well, if the pawn comes down, perhaps maybe in future, you know, I would have the threat of, you know, the queen coming over and checking the king. Uh, I wasn't sure if maybe that was uh, an idea that I could uh, do in future. Uh, my opponent might offer a queen exchange. You know, coming up and uh, taking the king. Oh, not taking the king, but threatening the king. You know, you, we do have uh, the king defending the uh, the b3 uh, square with the pawn and uh, uh, this uh, pawn here it, I think is well defended you know you have the late square bishop and the king and if I decided to go up and threaten the pawn then it's just simply my opponent would come up, so I need to have another attacker. Perhaps uh, we'd exchange queens. And uh, here there was an idea of uh, taking the hanging pawn, threatening the king. And my opponent just might push the pawn, getting the threat off the board. So perhaps I would take the uh, hanging pawn and my opponent might come over and help defend this square. Um, trying to get rid of the active uh, rook that I have. It's causing a lot of uh, issues for my opponent. So we'll go back to the game. And, um, you know, advancing the, the rook, I had perhaps ideas of coming over with my, my, uh, my other rook here, putting more pressure on the b2 pawn. Uh, and plus two, uh, my pieces aren't on light squares, so the light square bishop is kind of useless. Uh, other than the fact that this bishop is bearing down this pawn, but uh, I think white would need another attacker in order to help defend this square. And uh, yes, with this move, uh, my computer thought this, this move was uh, questionable, wasn't sure what was going on, but thought that perhaps we'd get into an equal position. Um, so my computer had recommended perhaps uh, queen f5 checking the king might be a better idea. My opponent would have to defend the king and uh, if I went up and I pushed uh, my rook I have two pieces um, attacking the slight square bishop My opponent could move the late square bishop back, attacking my rook. Um, and then uh, the hanging pawns defended, so I would have to figure out how I'm going to defend my, my rook. I don't know if it would be a possibility of even moving my rook over here and attacking uh, the rook. 
I'm not quite sure how that would pan out. Um, perhaps my opponent might attack my queen with a light square bishop. Um, perhaps I would move up and uh, check my opponent. My opponent would have to uh, defend the king. And, uh, you know, uh, moving the rook over now, attacking this uh, b2 pawn, which I think is uh, really dangerous right now for my opponent. And my opponent might decide just to push the b4 pawn, trying to defend the king. There is the idea of uh, en passant, where I could take the, the queen my two rooks are joined, so I don't have to worry about the threat from my opponent's queen. And uh, perhaps my opponent would just push the uh, a4 pawn down, attacking my rook. Uh, perhaps uh, I play rook e5, but I do have a hanging pawn here. And uh, things start getting uh, complicated uh, when my opponent plays rook g1. I feel as though my queen is going to be, uh, be under threat with moving my, with my opponent moving the rook down because it's supported by the queen and the light square bishop. Um, there's the hanging pawn on e7 and possibly, you know, having the queen come down and uh, put pressure on my a7 pawn. Uh, I don't know if that would be a good idea, but there's a lot of uh, different things going on right now. So my computer had suggested defending the uh, king, just pushing g2 which takes away from uh, uh, this idea here. But I do have to be careful of my opponent's rook. Um, perhaps the rook will come down and take my hanging pawn and uh, threatening my pawn here. And my computer had recommended e7. And I've been trying to figure out what the implications of my opponent taking the rook because there's nothing defending that rook. And uh, if my opponent would take the rook, then somehow I have to defend this pawn here and then the, the knight is potentially in jeopardy. So I thought, well, if my, if my opponent's rook comes over here, perhaps it can come down with a queen, attack the rook. The rook might come over to uh, a7 and take the pawn. And I could move my queen up, which gives me the ability to um, put pressure on my opponent's king. Um, but that being said, you know, attacking the rook with my queen. And if the rook comes over and I play this move, then my, my knight is gonna fall. Um, so I'm not quite too sure about this rook e7 um, move. I'm, sorry, yeah, rook e7, d7 I think. Rook d7, I think. I could be mistaken. Um, but yeah, um, to me that's kind of dangerous and I don't know why my computer would recommend something like this. Um, maybe perhaps more accurately instead of moving the, the queen down all over the place. It would just be a matter of maybe my king come over and I don't know, attack the rook, but I don't like that move as much. 
Um, but yeah, I'm still contemplating this move, attacking the rook. Uh, you know, I could potentially come up and attack the rook again, defending the, the knight. So maybe something like that would be a, a good thing to do. Anyways, I digress. Uh, so after rook e7, my computer uh, had suggested perhaps my opponent would come up rook d4. Uh, uh, trying to attack my uh, my queen. And all, I, all my opponent would have to do is uh, move the light square bishop someplace. And then my queen would be under threat. And I'll do one more where perhaps I would push the b2 pawn, uh, threatening pawn promotion. So back to the game, my opponent played uh, rook d4, attacking my queen. And I just simply moved down and uh, attacked my opponent's king, and I had to deal with the light square bishop attacking me. And I had thought perhaps this move would be a really good move. And uh, my opponent comes down and defends the b pawn. And again, I'm thinking, okay, well, I. I really want this pawn, you know, have more attackers than my opponent has defenders and really try to make a push for it and uh, my opponent played this move and I was contemplating capturing the pawn at Poisson, but then I had issues with that because what if my opponent's rook came over and now it threatens the queen? Um, I had considered maybe perhaps moving the queen over here, attacking the king. But then the king runs away someplace, and now all my pieces are on the queen side, and my opponent's moving towards the center, and now I have to start all over again, trying to reroute pieces going after my opponent. And, you know, I'm trying to find out, okay, how do I win this game? How do I win this game? Where's checkmate? What can I do? And I had a really hard time trying to figure that out. And, um, yeah, my computer really didn't like this move. Knight c6 attacking the, the rook uh, just because I'm hanging a pawn now. So it would be just simply the rook comes down and defends itself and wins a rook. Oh, sorry, not wins a rook, wins a pawn. So my computer had suggested perhaps this would be better. Attacking the king. Maybe the king would move away. And uh, perhaps we would play b2, creating a pawn promotion threat. There's a... Uh, Rook b4, again attacking my queen and my rooks. So I'd have to defend my queen somehow. And uh, again, we get into this um, really good um, threat on me. And as you can see, my opponent is bearing down on the h7 pawn. And once this uh, light square bishop moves, threatening my king, then my queen will fall. So my computer had just recommended taking the queen. I am forking both rooks, which I've highlighted in yellow just as a cautionary note because the queen won't come up and take this rook because it's defended by the king. Uh, but perhaps uh, this rook would have uh, issues. 
So perhaps we'd exchange rooks. King comes down. Could, uh, could try to run away, get behind um, enemy lines, as well, not enemy lines, get behind its own lines, trying to defend itself, stop being out in uh, the center where it's just getting harassed left, right, and center. And uh, perhaps I play this move. And uh, the queen can come down, threaten, well, ha offer an exchange of queens, defending the king. And uh, now all of a sudden, rook, if rook e6 was played, I think this is a really good move where I don't have to move this queen. I can maintain pressure on the king because the queen is pinned defending the king. And the bishop is pinned defending the king. It is defended by the pawn as well, but I think the pawn would um, fall too, perhaps. And it would just be a matter of even just trying to get this light square bishop to move uh, somewhere, just to try to get it out of the way, which it won't be able to do. So then I'm threatening uh, the light square bishop. So perhaps uh, we'd have an exchange of queens at the end. And uh, perhaps my opponent would come down and start using their king more aggressively attacking my pieces after all my opponent at this point in time really doesn't have a lot of active pieces so we'll continue back with the game I was concerned about this move um, quite a bit um, just because I only have the one rook here defending my back rank, which is why I played uh, g6. Just to, if I have to run away, I can run away. And again, I'm trying to figure out how am I supposed to um, attack my opponent's king. And I'm looking for checkmate. I'm trying to find threats and uh, really go after my opponent. Again, um, if you've noticed some of my videos, I do play quite aggressively at times. But my computer had recommended perhaps this move would be better because the pawn is pinned. The pawn here is pinned defending the king. You know, offering in exchange of rooks. Uh, my computer had recommended just uh, running the king away. You know, my opponent might play a4, which I think, you know, coming down to threaten the rook. You know, uh, exchange rooks. And uh, perhaps take the b4 pawn. Um, so now my, I'm threatening to take the pawn. And two, I was looking at, um, you know, if one can move their queen down here and my opponent does, uh, if I do exchange pawns and my opponent comes down here to take the pawn, then we have this move here where my opponent's king would have to go back someplace and I'd win the queen. So perhaps my opponent would take the, the pawn. And um, again, excellent example of uh, the king is being pinned to the queen, so it has to move away. Uh, C3. And I guess with this idea of maybe just trying to push the pawn, creating... Um, Sorry, that was my uh, my uh, glucose alarm. 
um, I do apologize but I uh, you know I may be creating threats here uh, for promoting the pawn my opponent might come up and try to go after this pawn we could have an exchange of Queens and uh, rook a4 and one could exchange the rook but my opponent is down on material it doesn't make sense I have an extra pawn than they do you know the the rook here um, my opponent has to be super careful and you know I have well my opponent has double pawns here Um, so maybe there would be a way of maybe pushing my pawns up or even using the king in order to aid my rook in taking down some of these pawns. And, uh, here again I'm trying to find threats on how to attack my opponent and I really I'm just coming up short but my computer didn't like my move here very much because the king can come down defend the rook and had suggested perhaps a5 would be better because this pawn can't move it's defending the king you know, uh, perhaps uh, getting ready to to try to exchange rooks on the back rank, uh, taking the pawn, and if my opponent decides to exchange rooks here, that's fine. We can exchange rooks, and uh, my opponent would have to defend the king somehow. So now my opponent uses my own pawn in order to uh, blockade my uh, rooks. And now I have to reroute my rook in order to uh, attack my opponent again. My opponent might decide to attack my, my rook. And... Uh, Perhaps again, you know, rerouting my rook with the potential of uh, maybe putting my rook up here, trying to go after my opponent's king. So my opponent might want an exchange of rooks and uh, Again here, there is a potential threat of pinning the king to the queen, perhaps winning the queen. And my two rooks are supported down here. Uh, so this rook exchange really doesn't do anything. But I would have to worry about um, my pawns. Uh, if my opponent was able to get behind them and take them off the board, then that would probably be a bad thing. So we get into a rook exchange, possibly. And uh, perhaps my opponent would reroute, reroute the queen in order to uh, defend the king. You know, taking the free pawn. Uh, the rook comes down to defend the king. And... You know, it's just keep moving and harassing my opponent's uh, king, trying to find uh, positional advantage or tactics or something like that that I could employ. But it hadn't worked out yet, but I think I'm really um, being that, uh, that thorn in my opponent's proverbial side. Again, here the pawns 
pin defending the king. And when I had made this move, I was thinking, well, maybe I could push the pawn up here. But then, you know, it's like, well, the king comes down. Oh, sorry, we don't want to do that. Let's go back up. Let's just chop uh, that variation off the board. So again, you know, I had ideas of perhaps pushing my pawn up, attacking my attacking my opponent's king, but then the king could come over and defend. Um, my opponent does try to, to defend the pawn. And um, I just kind of ignored it. And I'm like, I'm trying to go after the king. I'm trying to make uh, threats. You know, if I can push my pawn up here, attacking the king, then perhaps this rook would fall. But my computer had suggested this move instead. Attacking the king outright. And the king could come down and take the pawn. But then, you know, this king, this rook comes over, attacks the king again. Uh, and, you know, now we have a hanging uh, rook here. So the queen comes down and takes the hanging rook. My opponent might come down and attack my queen with the rook. And um, uh, here I believe the idea is pushing this uh, c6 pawn up, trying to uh, attack the rook and my opponent's b4 pawn, putting more pressure on my opponent's king. And here, uh, my opponent might come over, you know, we could exchange rooks, perhaps, gaining a tempo on my king, or uh, perhaps just uh, taking the pawn and offering a queen exchange. So again, you know, push the pawn attacking the rook. Queen might come down, offering an exchange of queens, and we don't have to take it right away. Uh, that's why my computer decided, well, we'll just take the rook. It's a free rook now. Then exchange queens. And uh, my opponent would probably move back in order to avoid uh, my rook coming over, attacking the king. And the king is, uh, is better off here, d helps defend the c3 pawn and perhaps uh, um, taking the d uh, taking the c3 pawn would be a lot better because if I didn't you know my opponent could push this pawn threatening my rook now we have these two pawns I have to be careful about coming down and uh, trying to promote So go back to the game. And this is where, um, where I showed you the position before that uh, I kind of felt like I really didn't have mate, but I didn't want to uh, play too aggressively and uh, blender my pieces. So I thought maybe the safest way was to just attempt to draw the game. And that's what I attempted to do. And I felt like I couldn't really move this queen too much you know, uh, probably at this square and this square to attack the king. And that being said, you know, I'm trying to hold my opponent's queen down here. I thought, well, if the queen comes to defend the king, then I take the rook. Or, you know, I could take the rook here as well. 
you know so I kind of felt like well this queen has to stay here in order to defend the rook and then my opponent would have to come down to defend the rook but my computer had suggested perhaps this move would be better trying to capture the hanging pawn which would in turn um, allow me to capture the queen so my opponent defends the pawn just by stepping away and here you know trying to um, remove this pawn to attack the king the pawn here is pinned and can't move so if my opponent comes down with the rook then we just simply come up and attack the king with the rook my opponent doesn't fall for that and decides perhaps maybe uh, like my computer suggests here pushing b5 you know um, going up and attacking the king Uh, this move that my computer came up with I really liked I did not even see this move and uh, as you can see here I'm directly threatening the knight or if the pawn comes down to take my rook then I just simply go up and uh, attack my rook or attack the rook And here, I, uh, my computer suggested that perhaps one could fork uh, both king and rook and capture with the hanging pawn and the king runs away. So the game continued. And as you can see, my queen doesn't lead these two squares, just putting pressure on my opponent's king. And uh, that was the end of the game. It uh, turned into a draw. And again, my opponent was rated 1781, and at the time I was 1614. No, my rating has gone up to 1665, which I feel is more appropriate to my playing level but there is a lot of uh, things that I have to work on and um, as I said before in one of these uh, in one of my other videos that I had done about not giving up just because you know your opponent is you know uh, maybe 200 300 points higher than you doesn't mean uh, they're any different than you um, it just means you have to be a lot more careful and um, trying to uh, come up with ideas in order to um, go for the win. And uh, as you can see in this game where I was trying to fight for a win, try to fight for a win and nothing really came for it. It's like one of those things where it's okay to settle for a draw. And um, I really didn't know how to win this game as you can see but uh, a draw is just as good as a win and uh, I haven't lost any points in the tournament which is uh, good I'd like to thank all my subscribers for watching this video and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video if you've liked what I've done uh, feel free to leave comments, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.